Hey everybody, welcome to the Sharp Tongue Podcast. I'm your girl, Jessie Mae Peluso. How you doing? What's up this week? Are you living? Are you learning? Are you loving? Are you taking care of your brain? Are you taking care of your soul? What are you doing for you? Well, before you do things for you, you can do something for me. You can go to my YouTube page, youtube.com forward slash Jessie Mae Peluso. Like and subscribe. Tell your friends. This is where you can watch all the videos for the podcast. And we have moved a whole bunch of fun stuff over to my Patreon page. We're doing Weeds Day from there. We're doing BAM, which is Bong and Movie, my bong and movie companion show where we rip a bong and watch a movie together. That's happening over at the Patreon, as well as some Sunday smoke sashes. <laughs> so go to patreon.com forward slash Jesse May Peluso and check out all the fun stuff. And what else? Speaking of fun stuff, the new podcast will be coming out with Carly September 1st and my new pod with Mike Tully is going to be coming out. You should have already binged on my new show on Netflix, Tattoo Redo. The full season is available now on Tattoo Redo on Netflix. It came out July 28th. So check it out. Listen to it. Eat it. Enjoy it. Drink it. Put it into your soul. Have fun with it. And thank you for everybody who's already enjoyed it. I can't get through all of your messages. I get all of your emails and phone calls and all of that. So thank you so much for your support. I really fucking appreciate it. And if you guys want to call into the podcast and have your question or comment featured on an episode, call us 513-916-0930 and leave me a voicemail, a question, if you need some advice. Those happened frequently on the pod, usually along with the Dr. Peluso episodes. And there will be some more grief survival guide episodes coming up. A lot of fun stuff for you motherfuckers. So thank you so much for your support. Rate and review us. You know the drills. You know the drillsies. Leave us a review. We love to know how you feel about the podcast. Shout out to Debbie Della Rosos and to Paul. I don't know who Paul is. Who's Paul? <laughs> I said Paul. There's no Paul. <laughs> I was going to say Rudy Pavich, who is my producer, <laughs> but I called him Paul. <laughs> I'm sorry. I am in my sister's camp attic on an edible and some day rosé. So, you know, your girl's feeling a little loosey goosey. So, shout out to Paul. All the Pauls out there, much, much love. <laughs> And there's so much more I'm sure I'm forgetting, but enough is enough. Let's get into this episode. This is a very special episode. I honestly nerded out to the person that I was interviewing. So honestly, I felt so honored to be able to have this person on my podcast. Every now and then I get to interview people that are just doing things with their life that is admirable and selfless and actually invokes change in the world beyond their own world. So this next guest is a conservationist, a writer, a speaker, a filmmaker. He is the wildlife director of Jungle Keepers and is personally doing his part to preserve the Amazon and says that he's going to take me on an excursion. And so I better start doing some push-ups and get used to spiders because I'm down for it. And I hope you guys are down for this episode. I think you're really going to enjoy it with Mr. Paul Rizzoli. It's Rosalie, but we got to make it Italian. Sharp Tongue Podcast. Beep, 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 You're listening beep. to the Sharp Tongue Podcast. I'm your host, Jesse May Jessie Peluso. Peluso. It's a personal look. Well, it's not really a look because it's a podcast. I'm already fucking this up. This is kind of like a verbal comedy diary, a deep look into the crevices of my mind. It's going to get dirty. You might cry. You probably laugh. Hopefully you'll laugh. The whole point is for you to laugh, but you also might cry. I talk about my family. I talk about farts. farts. I talk about love, loss comedy how hard it is to make it in this biz i'm a fucking professional each week it's something different sometimes i have a guest host sometimes it's gonna be a movie companion episode sometimes i just ramble about the bullshit i dealt with the week before you never know what you're gonna get it's raw uncut and funny it's me i'm so pumped i'm beyond pumped i'm a low-key nerd nature nerd (laughs) and i have the official nature nerd on the podcast biggest one (laughs) 
Paul Rosley, thank you so much for taking time. Thank you for having me on. Ancient trees in the Amazon to be yeah, here. It is a seer. I, I did have to take time off of that. I had to climb down out of a tree to be here today. So I believe it. I honestly, truly, of all the people I've interviewed, would believe that that's what you did to be here. Is, here's a question for you. Yeah. Do you find, because we're I, there's so much I want to get into, but my first question looking at you, do you find you're starting to resemble a man who lives in nature the more time you spend in nature? Because you look like you could just literally survive anywhere. You, first of all, it sculpts your body. So like if you're, let's just say like you're indoors for quarantine for months on end, you get all soft and doughy and white and like <laughs> your feet get soft. When I'm out in the jungle for months on end, the calluses on your feet get hard, your skin gets tough, your eyes get sharper. It literally makes you into something different. So like now I can walk on gravel, I can walk on glass. I got like rhino skin on my feet. You're bionic. It's like those when pigs, domesticated pigs get let loose, they start to grow their tusks. So uh-huh. you're essentially growing your human tusks out. I'm just letting my tusks out, man. You gotta <laughs> just let your tusks out. I had another thought when I was getting ready um, to talk to you. I wondered what the longest stint you've spent in the Amazon was Ooh, um, maybe five months. And what do you eat? Like, it, uh, that's not a problem. What do you I, eat? Do you eat I, off the land? I was just having this conversation. A friend of mine was like, uh, he saw that show alone on Netflix and he was like, you I got it. Eat. It's so good. It's so, um, good. it's so good. It's the first actual survivor show that, that is legitimate. And uh, he was like, you got to go on this show. And I was like, dude, if they did it in the Amazon, I'd be cruising. They'd have to make it like you have to survive a year in in Beverly Hills. <laughs> <laughs> they have, mean, put you in the mall. A, I would die. I would die instantly. I'd be dead in like an hour. The mall sucks my life force. It's like kryptonite. I think I've been in a mall twice in my adult life. <laughs> the irony of you spending so much time in the Amazon is I don't even think that you could spend time on Amazon.com. I think that would murder you too. Like you would die. No, Just yeah, you become depletion. you become like one of these like rare butterfly species that like you take it out of its environment and it dies immediately. I'm like something from Avatar. It's interesting. You know, I wonder, I read that you've basically been a conservationist since you were v- from a young age, like 18. You went from New Jersey to the Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had it in my in my bones when I was young, man. My parents like you know, they'd be like, they'd give me like a toy truck and I just feel like snakes, birds, frogs. And I just want to go outside. I want to go by that stream. And, and what, so, what do you think? What, what do you attribute that to? Were either of your parents into nature? Were they? No, they're from Brooklyn. <laughs> they're like, yeah, you got some cobblestone and pizza. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I don't know where I came from. They always said, I always heard that growing up. I had all these like World War II uncles that were like, you know, guys from Brooklyn. And they'd just be like, you know, what is it with you and the animals? What are you doing? <laughs> um that was just my thing. I don't know. I always loved them. I always felt like I could kind of communicate with animals. I always had like, I'm the type of person, like I go on a hike and I'll have, you know, a bear will walk out and I'll be like, guys, bear, you know, it'll just, it just happens. It just, it just gets magnetized to me. I was at a family barbecue a few weeks ago in Brooklyn and a parakeet flew up and like landed on my hand and everyone's just like, what, what universe kind of, is yeah, it? What, what, like, what, what kind of I'm like Pocahontas person are you? Dr. Doolittle. <laughs> the colors of the wind. <laughs> Do you have a way just because of my overlap? I want to see more of your face. You my people are too. Yeah. Can you like angle? So my little angle. There we go. There we go. Yes. Boom. We can see you. Yeah. Um, so basically you just had a natural inclination yeah. to nature and you were drawn to it. And it seems like it's drawn to you. I mean, like, like I said, I can, I can go outside right now and I'll probably find something. It just, it just comes out for me. Or maybe it's like, maybe it's the eyes. Cause some of the guys I work with in the Amazon, they're the same way. Like, you know, you could take you could take a bunch of people from the mall, transplant them to the to the Amazon, and they won't see anything. They'll just see green. You're with somebody that knows what they're doing, and they're they're picking out rare frogs, and they're seeing all kinds of stuff. You notice the jaguar that's in the bushes looking at you, like it's 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 interesting. You're always yeah. being watched at the mall. You you see a cougar googling eyes to you from the cafeteria. Yeah. It's basically the same thing. Fuck it's totally it just cougars, the cougar man. has fake tits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they're actually a lot more dangerous than all the animals. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You're not wrong. Yeah, what would you say? Book. You know, I wondered also, is there an acclimation period for you either way, going into the yeah. Amazon, coming out back into civilization? It. How do yeah. you, what do you do to acclimate and what is that process like for you? Well, going to go into the jungle is great because you go to the jungle and you, you just, you know, it's, it's paradise. And then it's coming out. It's landing in JFK airport and like just seeing the shitty people and going in the shitty bathrooms and just, 
everyone's nasty and it's crazy and you have your phone going off and it's just in the jungle. No one can touch you. It's peaceful. That's so much better. It's so much what, better. What, have you, what revelations have you learned about our urban societies having spent so much time in pure nature and nature at its purest yes. form? Probably that it's like, it starts to feel like you're outside the matrix. Mm. Like you start going, you know, when people are like, you hear people talking about like politics or you hear people arguing over, over these, these little like things of the moment. And you're like, the world is dying. Like it, it, like there's still, there's still time and all the other stuff, but it's like, given the gravity of the world on fire, the Amazon fires species going extinct. The fact that we've brought out AIDS and COVID and the dust bowl from nature. And it's like, what are you doing? Why are like, you, what are we really? Yeah. What are like, we really worried about? How much time are you going to spend talking about someone's tweets? Like, it's just not, it just, it just starts to get like, you come back and you just go, you guys are lost. And then you want to go back, go back. Well, to you talked faith. a little bit about that. Like there was a, um, I, I feel like I took a screen grab of how, here we go. Here we go. The, I took a screen grab of your thing. Um, you, you were talking about, this is on your beautiful news, the cover oh, yeah. that they took of you. Um, and how you have you're working with local rangers basically you took gold miners and turned them into people who are now helping the amazon is that true that's sort of true so the, what they did there i mean they we did a big hour long interview and i'm sure you know how it goes they like mash everything up and switch it around and, and they don't course. you know um i have worked with gold miners there was a in 2018 i was going up a river with this nat geo photographer trevor frost and everyone was like you're gonna die we were going to photograph anacondas and they said, as soon as you get in with the gold miners, they're going to cut your heads off. You're going to be found in a, bio, you know, in a pile of rubble. We and made you still went. You're like, cool. Yeah. Well, challenge accepted. I mean, every day there's somebody saying you're going to die from something out there. People constantly are like, you know, piranhas. I'm like, yeah, they're, they're delicious. Um, are they really? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What, what, what fish do they taste like? Like what fish I would know? I don't, I don't know. I don't know what, you know, like a sushi. Like. Is it like a nice <laughs> seared scallop? <laughs> I don't, like, I don't even eat fish when I'm here. It's just that down there, man. Like we're hungry. You just, you just pop in for a few. So what we do, you were asking about the, yes. the, the body thing. What we do is if you're, if your feet are ready, you have thick enough calluses on your feet that I could take a knife and cut the back of my heel off. And I get this schlag of, of skin. And I put that on a hook, throw that in the river and the piranhas love it. And so you pull those out. So you use a piece of your foot as bait and work your way up the ecosystem. So you catch a piranha, then you cut the tail off the piranha. And as you eat your piranha for lunch, you leave the tail of the piranha in with a bigger hook. And then you get like a nice big catfish. And that's how we go up the. That is not how I remember. I swallowed a fly that book. (laughs) 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 I cut a piece off of myself, fed it to a fish. And now I'm eating a bear. You caught a fish with your foot? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll send you I'll send you the video. I did it. I did it when we were like starving on an expedition. We were all losing weight. And I was this like, That's what I'm saw saying. Like, what the fuck do you eat in the Amazon? And yeah. you eat something, you're basically kind of eating your feet in a way. <sighs> not not completely, but <sighs> yeah, it's a stretch. If they digested it, I would food. say that you were right, but they're not. You 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 take the hook out and it's still got the piece of your foot. You get the next piranha with it. Fong ghoul, that is a, that's a shock. <laughs> I haven't heard that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's I grew up a fungal. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> there's also something, um, you know, I obviously I stalked your page. I have stalked your page for a while, but um when I knew that we had this confirmed, your writing is just so beautiful. Thank you. Uh, I want to read something that it, honestly, just the way you write, it feels like it's coming straight out of your soul. And you're obviously completely connected to what you're doing to be able to write like this. You said the ancient trees breathe mist into the morning. Monkeys are waking on the branches. The river is dark and cold from the night and the jungle keepers rangers are out there on patrol. Our mission is protect the stunning ecosystem and all the heartbeats that call it home. It's just so it's such a um, poetic way to describe what you're doing. And we're going to get into the jungle keepers and all of that. But uh, the other thing that I was talking about earlier about the urban living, there was something you said about how basically how we're existing now has pulled us so far from what you're doing, your work, 
um, being a conversation, uh, a, a con- con- convers- why can't I conservationist. say this? Conservationist. Um, that the way we live in this urban society, we have a sort of disassociation with the realities of what's going on with the Amazon. Yeah. And my question is, how detrimental is it right now? Because I've seen documentaries and I agree me living in this society. It hurts my heart. I'm definitely a person much like you, you know, I have dogs and I've always felt this kinship to animals, but even all that considered, I'm still so removed from it. So I guess my question is how, how bad is it really in the Amazon Mm -hmm. right now? And how can people like myself get closer to it? Well, um, first of all, thank you so much. Cause as a writer, that's the best thing you can hear. That's, that that that's like wonderful when someone when someone's hit by something you wrote that there must be I mean I I don't do stand up but like when you're out slaying a crowd and they're just like screaming that that must be like such a rush for you and you just gave me that like I, I oh love that's it. awesome I'm glad it, I I connected uh, with your writing thank you um yeah no it's uh, the thing is we are so disconnected and I feel like again like it's it's almost like you want to just slap people because we literally get nutrient like we get vitamin D from the sun. We're, right. we're, 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 we're solar creatures. You know, I mean, there's so many things like we, we literally rely on plants to live. It's all there. It's, it's, it's almost like ridiculous to lay it out. Like, obviously we wouldn't be here if there wasn't stuff making oxygen for us and creating ecosystems that we could, we could live off of. I mean, planet earth comes standard with free fish and we're ruining that. That's so like, fucked. like when I hear that there's like, you know, our salmon runs in North America are down to like 3% what they're supposed to be. What are you doing? I know. What, what are we doing? What are we doing? Allowing to happen. There's a, there's a Louis C.K. skit where he's like, God comes down and he goes, what did you do? He goes, the polar bears are brown. And it's like, <laughs> I gave you food. And it's like, people, come on. Like, there's, there's free food everywhere. Like, everything's great. There's leaves on the trees. Like, just don't fuck it up. We've been fucking it up for so long. And I feel like, you know, I definitely am guilty of it, too. You know, it's it's that sort of thing like out of sight, out of mind. But the crazy thing about the Amazon specifically is how much it regulates the entire world. Yep. yep. And it's base. it's our lungs. It's the lungs of the earth. Mm-hmm. And w- at what capacity is it, is it breathing right now? Like I, I mm-hmm. know it's been choking um, right now. endangered, Yeah. but it's choking right now. <laughs> Great. Yeah. I mean, first of all, though, the other thing is like you said, like that, that feeling of like guilt or something. And I, I hate that. Cause I know, when I do study abroads or when I, when I give talks to students, like a lot of kids will come up to me and tell me that they almost, almost saying like, I don't want to live because I feel like I'm killing the earth. And it's like, that is such a horrible um, way to grow up. I mean, it's like growing up yeah. in a McCarthy novel. Like, it's just like, it's ugly. Um, so like, I, I hate that feeling, but it's like, we're not, you know, like the fact that you were born into a city and you live there doesn't mean that you're killing the earth. It's, Every person, and like I always say, like people are always like, what's your opinion on this? What's your opinion on that? I'm like, look, I care about one thing. I'm trying to make sure that the trees don't cut, get cut down and I'm protecting the heartbeats on this one river. And it's like, you can't take on everything. Like my friend was like, I'm a vegan and I also drive an electric car and I also don't travel and I do this and I only use like sustainable breast milk from like, you know, underprivileged dolphins. And I'm like, look. Is your, just- is your friend Leonardo DiCaprio? Yeah, yeah. He it sounds me, like something he, Leonardo DiCaprio. He called me the other day, and he was like, "I don't even have time to make movies anymore because I'm too busy, you know, <laughs> too busy charging my, my electric car." <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he. Okay, quick side <laughs> note. Quick side note. Yeah. Being the the human that you are, doing the amazing work that you do, do mm. you vibe with what Leo's trying to do and what he's been trying to do within yeah, Hollywood? Yeah, no, I think it's awesome. I mean, he basically won the actor game and then said, "I'm going to do more of." of the environmental work. And he's, he's proved it. You know, he's, he's, he's done serious work. He doesn't even publicize a lot of the work he does. No. Um, and his whole IG page is just raising just awareness. Yep. It's just and environmentalism. He was well, a story. I love. He went to meet, I think it was, he went to meet Putin and like his, either his plane had to go down or it busted an engine and they like had to like crash land. But then he took another flight and like Putin was like this, this is real man. He cares about the tigers. the pussy tigers. <laughs> and, like, Did Putin, Putin really like, say that? Guy. I mean, in, in his own words, I don't know if he actually said <laughs> pussy tiger, but, you know. Um, the, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is you discussed, and I, I found within my stalking research of you, that the one of the biggest dangers to the Amazon are roads. Oh. 
in I was like, what? Yeah. Roads are like to me as a, you know, an urbanite, that's yeah. civilization. Roads open up mm-hmm. possibility in the open road, but tell mm-hmm. us how detrimental nope. roads are to the Amazon and what it means to the Amazon. So just this morning, I actually like there, there are these people in conservation that I consider like the wizards, like, you know, like Jane Goodall. Mm-hmm. Um, I spoke to, and there's other ones that, you know, no one else would know the names of, but I spoke to this guy today, uh, Adrian Forsyth, who just his work, I'm just, you know, you know, like when you meet somebody that like the, the, the public wouldn't know about them, but you like, you're geeking out meeting like your God, like this is Gandalf. Yes. Um, I mean, Adrian Forsyth sounds like he's got a great man bun, like the first man bun and he wears khakis with a bunch of pockets and he's got literal encyclopedias yeah, in his like bamboo hut. The man. Yeah. Who's created <laughs> multiple national parks and knows things that I've never heard of. And we were talking about roads this morning and I was saying like, you know, we've had two new roads this, this past in the past two months, we've had two new roads and every time it's devastating. You just get guys with a bulldozer that go into, I'm talking like, pristine Eden, like the most beautiful thing on earth with thousand year old trees and tapestries of vines and spider monkeys, undocumented species, anaconda. Oh my God. And they just bulldoze through it, make a road. And then what happens is everyone that wants to make a farm just goes in through that road. And what are they so, farming? Like what's one of the, do you don't mind if I spark up? I'm, I'm like inspired listening to all this. Um, what are they, what's the most common farmed harvested item in the Amazon, the trees? No, I mean, the trees they cut for for timber that comes to the US and China, the the thing is, so like the Amazon fires a few years ago, like that was people are going, you know, why, you know, the Amazon's supposed to burn. I'm like, no, that's California dipshit. Um, the Amazon, the Amazon not, a, it's a rainforest. It's a rainforest. It's not supposed to burn. People it's here supposed like, to create um, oxygen yeah. thick air. Exactly. It's so thick that like, oh my God, when you breathe down there, it's just like, it feels, it feels good. You can just like take in a, a breath. People like it's hot. I'm like, dude, I'm so alive. You just queef um, out magical dust. Not you, but me. If I went there, I, my queefs would probably cure a lot of diseases. Are you saying I can't queef? Oh, well, it's a challenge. <laughs> challenge accepted. Um, no, <laughs> but dude. I can't queef. That's the title of the podcast. <laughs> There's our title. We got it. <laughs> Clip it. <laughs> The uh, but no ro- roads literally like if there's like a textbook about rainforest rainforest 101 is is roads are the worst. It's like I didn't know that. There's another thing. Road. Yeah, because if you have a rainforest, these giant trees, no one's going through them. And so what I was talking about this morning with this guy was, um, he actually worked with an oil company to protect a forest. They wanted to extract oil, and so he said, look, as long as you don't build a road. You can get in there by helicopter, clear, you know, an acre, whatever, put your drill down, get the oil out and then get it out by chopper. And they did that and they never created a road. And so they actually ended up helping each other. So and there's so like actual mutually beneficial ways to get resources without completely destroying. Oh, yeah. The Amazon. Is, yeah. is it is it just is it just a resource issue for these companies that in laziness and maybe cost why they're going about the more destructive route? Yeah. No, I mean this, I always tell people, I was like, I have the dumbest job in the world. I'm trying to convince people to not cut down a tree. All you got to do is nothing. Go home, asshole. There, you literally, we won't have this problem. Everybody could just like go surfing and do other normal things. Like my job is to put myself out of business. And like, so with, with the Amazon, it's literally just that there's a lot of poor unemployed people that need to farm to live and they want more land. There's a lot of companies that want to go down there and deforest. There's idiots like us that want to put hardwood floors in our, on our, in our houses. And so we want ironwood. And so we're cutting down a tree that has 2000 different species living on it. A millennium these tree trees are a thousand years old. I was just going to say, am I a hippie to say these trees are so intelligent and they're so they're responsible for, like creating families within the forest oh, yeah. and they no, connect I'm... and they, and they have lived through so much. I mean, I, I took a trip with my mom to the uh, Sequoia national park. <sighs> yeah. And, and I got to that really, house. that started to like yeah. get me a little bit more interested in what was going on outside of my urban living in those trees. Like they feel wise. I know it sounds like woo woo to say, but something that's been standing that long Mm -hmm. and has sustained through so many different types of weather patterns and different eras and all of that, it must have some sort of natural wisdom. Not like we know as human beings, but obviously it's a living, it's a living creature 
per se Mm -hmm. that's on earth. No, I mean, you got to think like some of those ironwood trees, I think like when the Spanish arrived to South America, that thing was a sapling. When the U.S. was being formed, that thing was a tree. It's these things are so old, and there's all these all these other species living on them, and it's like you literally you want to just go like hug these trees, and so like that's <laughs> always you do you want to you want to you want to hug these trees. I mean that's why I'm always climbing on them. I'm always crawling through them. There was one tree that fell over, and it, it formed a cave, and there was like there's snakes and lizards and bats and jaguars were going in there. You could tell um, by the footprints on the bottom of the cave, but. How it's, would you uh, say like in the Amazon? Um, I guess it would be hard to know for sure, but because of the nature of the rainforest, do these trees harbor the most amount of diverse ecosystems and in, mm-hmm. in, in creatures? Because it sounds like you just describing all of these things that are living around the tree. It sounds like a lot of different types of creatures. Yeah, no. So the West Amazon, the reason I started working there is because it's the most biodiverse place on earth in any period. So even like from the dinosaurs until now, all of life on earth, the Andes Amazon, you have the Andes, which is a mega biodiverse biome. And then you have the Andes, the Amazon, which is a mega biodiverse biome. And where they meet is right where I am. So there's more wow. life there than anywhere else. And you have a clash Every, of kind of everything. a little bit of a variation of biodiversities between the Andes and mm-hmm. the Amazon. And they come together to create their own like intermingled right you said something else that really um, struck my soul cord and it, it has to do with the documentary dark green. Is it out? It's not out yet. And I don't know even know where it's coming out, but we're getting close. So can I quote, can I say one of the quotes you say in the opening? Okay. Um, you come in as a voiceover and you say, for me, the forest is the temple where it's possible to turn. Oh, wait, no, wait, wait, nope, nope, nope. That's something different. Hold on. It's on my second page. Hold on. Hold on. Please hold. Hold Wait, on. this is what happens when you smoke some weed. <laughs> Wait. Hold on. Wait for it. I wrote it someplace. Oh, here we go. Found it. Um, the locals say there are still places out there where the rivers run clean and the trees are the trees kings. trees are kings. And life is everywhere. And that's where I need to go. That's yeah. like your, your calling. You're, you're basically you're being beckoned and called to this place, which is to me as a person living on this side, the scariest existence I could imagine. Not, not scary in the sense that it, that it lacks beauty because there yeah. can be beauty in, in that sort of um, fear of it, but you're literally being called to like one of the wildest places on earth. And you know, the thing I was quoting before where you also said for me the force is the temple where it's possible to turn off the background chatter and i wonder with you being called to this place and it helping shut out all of the chaos what for you was there any for you as a kid growing up some sort of like traumatic thing that made you want to shut out the chatter that maybe you were drawn to the amazon because of it's a loaded question but basically i'm wondering what your trauma is uh, whew, good question. Um, I hated every second of school. I hated mm. sitting in a chair. I hated being told what to do. I hated, I mean, I just remember I, I, I actually dropped out of high school after sophomore year after getting suspended like nine times or something, something ridiculous like that. And my parents who were amazing said, they're like, you can actually leave high school. And this is a PSA for anybody. If your kids hate school, get them out. You can take a GED. It's a three hour test. Go to college take a GED, start at a community college as an unmatriculated student, and then get do good grades and go to college. Skip two years of high school. There's That's a so really many great kids. idea. <laughs> it's such a great idea. There's, there's at is. least five kids in every class that just are not cut out for that. Whether they need to learn a trade or they want to go be you know, skydivers or artists or whatever it is, they don't need the second two years of high school. Thank well, God don't. I got out. I got and out and went to the Amazon. That's You did at such a young age. And yeah. our education system, I've talked about this on the podcast before, it's it's meant to standardize an education to a bunch of kids and yeah. kids don't learn the same. They, they learn very differently. And I was similar like you. I did not like school. I had a desk out in the hallway. My, I challenged my teachers. I just was mm-hmm. bored because I learned. I didn't learn from pen to paper. I learned from like being out and experiencing things with people. And, and it's just 
I think it's a really good idea, even though some people are like, what the fuck to drop out of school kids. Yeah. To drop out of school. The trick is then you can't be a, you can't be you can't be someone's like 30 year old couch kid, though, then you can't just drop no, out of can't. school and like smoke blunts on the couch all day. Yeah, like you can't do that. No. Yeah, that sounds like all the guys I dated in my 20s. You definitely <laughs> can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, another thing I wondered about is that what you do probably is so fulfilling for you, knowing that you have a purpose and what you're going for is making a difference in, in raising awareness. I wonder, um, what does your downtime consist of? For me, I, I, I'm traveling a lot or used to, I, I used to before quarantine. Yeah. I'm going to be getting back into that. My downtime consists of yeah. being home. Mm-hmm. I, I smoke a little bit of the Mary J. I read, I meditate. It's quiet. Devil's lettuce, the jazz cabbage. <laughs> what is it for you? Paul uh, Rosoli, huh? Rosoli, you Rosoli. know, we make, we make the mozzarella. Hey, um, uh, but actually, actually, no, I, I, I'm i also very close to my family. So, like, that's why I'd say, like, five months is, like, my biggest stint because I, I go away and I come home. Um, And so I hang out with my golden retrievers. I hang out with my friends. But I got to tell you, like, starting a company and an NGO and trying to figure out this weird life, like, my friend just sent me a meme the other day and she was like, she was like, you're that guy that said, I'm not doing a nine to five. And so instead I'm going to work 24 <laughs> seven. And it's like, I don't really. Oh have my God. Time. That's exactly what it is though. When yeah. you're, when you're either, you know, an entrepreneur or, you know, a self starter, whatever, angel investor, you know, like me, like I'm my own yeah, boss. You gotta work that much harder. You have to work so much fucking yeah. harder. You go to a job, they send you a paycheck. If you're an artist or something, you got to take nothing and make something. And then you yes. got to sell it to people. Yes. It and then you got to protect it and then convince other people who you want to work for you to help you so you can be freer to, to expand. You have to convince them that it's worthwhile. Yeah. No, it's, it's so much more work that I've actually, there were times along the way where I definitely looked at my friends and I was just like, damn, I'd love for somebody to just write me a paycheck. I would Wouldn't it be love nice? that. <laughs> my God. I was like, this is, I was like, so you just, they just send it to your bank account. <laughs> so you just get a check like every two weeks is that how it works i was like is that cool. how it works and they're like yeah but but i gotta i gotta go sit there on, on the on the laptop and i was like never mind fuck that yeah I'll, that's I'll where you're there. out like a cubicle yeah, like, bye. bye bye you you'd have to have yeah. like vines an anaconda you'd have to have a desk stuff. Have to, have to have a, threat, a death threat at all times i need to have you could have a water mind. station you need like a moat you need a wow. moat around your desk yeah. to feel comfortable and even then i mean was, i first of all i can't drink um, like, first of all, I will, I would never drink bottled water. That would be like, you know, the most hypocritical thing I could do. And tap water to me just tastes like, uh, I don't know, whatever they put in tap water, but it doesn't taste good. I want stream water, man. With the, so <laughs> you sent me a photo and it's on your Instagram. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You talked about how clean the water is mm-hmm. in the Amazon. Mm-hmm. And I would assume it has to do with just the processes that go on in that environment where mm-hmm. the, it's constantly recirculating and cleansing itself. Yeah. How is the water, how is the water, like literally you could just scoop it out and drink it? Yep. I mean, look, every day, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to make a short, like, like, a, like a really beautiful piece with music that goes to this, but like you look at the sweat or even better, you take, you take a drink out of the water and then two minutes later you're hiking, you're sweating and you watch that drip off you and you watch in the afternoon all that mist coming off the jungle. And then literally two hours later, you see the thunderheads and the black clouds and then it rains down and then you're drinking out of the river. And again, it's like that is flowing straight through you. Wow. You are connected to it there. And so, yeah, these trees, all those roots, all that fungal mycelium, that is just completely filtering everything. And so that For water. Those of you who are wondering perfect. what that swear word was that he just said, he's talking about the underground interconnectivity system of mushrooms yeah. All kinds of amazing, amazing fungus. Amazing mushrooms. Oh, we don't even yeah. need mushrooms in the Amazon. You can just lick the frogs and trip. You got ayahuasca. <laughs> Have you done that? Ooh, yeah. I mean, this is My, we're completely open. Like we can talk about all of it. Go oh, good, good, good. Yeah, I've done ayahuasca and uh, I recommend to people, unless you're trying to die and be reincarnated and go through some traumatic shit in the underworld, just do mushrooms like a normal person. Yeah. Like I hear people and they're like, oh my God, in my yoga studio, they're going to do an ayahuasca ceremony. First, stop. Ayahuasca is from a vine in the Amazon. You don't, to me, you don't do ayahuasca outside of the jungle. 
So when you're you, saying like the best place to do it would be in the the birthplace um, of it. Yeah, like if you're gonna if you're gonna take it seriously, which you should. Right. Um, you you make your pilgrimage there and drink it at the, you know, in front of on your knees in front of a shaman and then get ready because you're going places. <sighs> now, going when there. you say you're going places and I've talked about this with so many of my friends, I have a, a really dear girlfriend of mine, Jackie Stang, who is a huge psilocybin ab- advocate mm-hmm. um, and ayahuasca and all of things psychedelic. You know, she always says that, too, like you really have to respect. Oh, yeah. The process. And I'm I'm working my way up to it because I respect how it's done. And I feel the same way. It's like, it's so interesting how we live these lives, these urban lives. And so much of it is us integrating things that are natural. We're pulling these natural things to try and make us sort of have a little bit more of a baseline within these modern societies. Like, you know, having these shaman led, ayahuasca trips and you know felicity's living room overlooking malibu yeah no that's it's not, our way of yeah trying I know to bring nature home yeah and I, I know i'll probably like you know either offend some people or make them feel bad but just if you're gonna it, ayahuasca's too and I'm, I'm not like a big hallucinogenics person but it's just like it's too sacred to to do you know in, in someone's in someone's room. podcast like not, studio. yeah with like some guy <laughs> that's like you know charging you 900 dollars to do it like when we do it down there the guy that brewed it was this old old guy that like you know his stories is the stories he saw you know who got eaten by an anaconda and the time he got shot at by uncontacted tribes and you know um one of the guys his father has a uh, had cut his arm open and put the nerve from the neck of a stingray of a of an electric eel in his arm and so he was infused with the power of the jungle and this guy was powerful and strong and living alone until he was 85 and then one day he died smiling at a barbecue with his family like he was healthy as shit until the day he died because of the eel eel nerve that's what he said that's what he said he said the the, the eel made him into a superhuman and he kind of (laughs) was I mean, you know, people drink Red Bulls out here and it kind of works so I would believe like something more natural having an actual effect on somebody I mean, whatever, whatever works, man, but whatever but ayahuasca, works, whatever keeps your boat float until you're 85. I feel like doing ayahuasca and not being like, I'll, I'll give you an example. Like before I'd done ayahuasca, I'd probably, I'd taken shrooms a few times and like I sat down and I had, I had like, you know, like my phone next to me, I was going to like listen to music. I was probably a disc man back then, but um, I was like going to listen to music. I had like a notebook. I was like, I'm going to do some writing. You drink it. And all of a sudden the, the, the jungle sounds are going through your skin. And you start going, why? And every I've done it three times, and every time it starts raining, as if it's part of the ceremony, the sky opens wow. up. And we do it in the dark, in the jungle, on a platform, and the, the shaman starts singing. And then that's it. It's bombs away. I de- dematerialized, and I was in unconstructed dream space for a long time. And like, isn't it was that, terrifying. I was just going to say, like, th- because essentially, you have no choice but to let go. You're it's not like you're controlling the journey you're on. The journey, the journey is driving the journey. Yeah. No. Once you once you shot that back, you you clipped into the roller coaster. You're not you're not getting off. And have you while you're experiencing what you've experienced in your three journeys, have you wanted to get off at times? <sighs> yeah. <sighs> See, when that's like, the hardest part for me. Is that? Oh God. Yeah. No. You know, I it's was, such a re- you really have to relinquish control. You relinquish all, I mean, I literally, you feel like, I mean, at least for me, I mean, I've, I know people who've had like really pleasant experiences. I was dematerialized, fell through the earth, was out in space and then didn't have a body, couldn't remember my name. And then it was like, and then I was on the jungle floor covered in snakes, which I'm okay with, but I was, I was covered in snakes in this and this giant like flaming beetle God comes to me and it leans forward and just goes, speak. And it opened its jaws and I'm standing there and like the winds of time are blowing and I'm going, what do you want? And it eventually was screaming back and forth at each other over the din of like creation and what it wanted, it got. And that was when I started vomiting a rainbow and I was vomiting in real life, of course, which is better than I do have a friend who uh, believed he was a spider and he was making a web, uh, but he was just shitting his pants for. Oh God. Oh God. He was sharding out silk. Yeah, but he thought he was a spider, so he thought he was creating like beautiful art with (laughs) that. He was creating beautiful shark. Beautiful art for us to clean up. What what did the beetle want? The beetle wanted me to vomit the rainbow and give him the the answers. 
That's what the beetle Whoa. got. It was like a giant Balrog beetle thing. This was like a, a 30 foot tall beetle. It was terrible. How vivid, how vivid of a beetle are we talking? Like <sighs> vivid and also covered in geometric patterns and changing wow. at all times and made of fire. I mean, all kinds of, <sighs> See, I don't know if I'm ready I, for a fucking big ass beetle yeah. for me to vomit in his <laughs> mouth. I mean, for a fucking beetle. <laughs> It sounds very, very scary. Um, no, but scary. I agree was, with you that, yeah. uh, you know, having the process in the Amazon yeah. makes the most sense to me. Um, is this yeah. now, I want to get into um, both of your uh, endeavors. But first, I wanted to ask you about the locals. Like, who lives in the Amazon? What what are they like? In, in how do they feel about what's going on? And... I know you mentioned a lot of them are poor and are at the mercy of working for these farming companies that are destroying the Amazon. What what are the locals like? And and are there different tribes? And mm-hmm. I have so many. I just want to know like what they're like and what they live like. Well, I mean, everything I've done has been because I I fell in with the locals. And actually, I was speaking to this like world renowned biologist not that long ago, and he was going, you know, I'm so jealous of you. And I went, excuse me, you know, this this guy's like, you know, a god. And uh, I was like, what are you talking about? And he was like, you have spent so much time with these people going on hunting trips and learning from them and walking barefoot. He's like, I never got to do that. He goes, I just work with the same old, like, you know, crusty ass professors over and over and over again. And you've spent years living with like the people down there. Yeah. In the mix. In the mix. And and I, that changes things. I'm so thankful that that happened, that I didn't just, you know, go like the white guy route and just like, you know, be studying bat shit for for 15 years in a lab, like your in, lab, in a lab was, or in like in the Amazon these, like, polished, like, you know, research stations that they have, but living with these guys, man, like I, my main teacher, JJ was, uh, Juan Julio. He, uh, I mean, he just took me and was like, look, he was like, what do you want? And I was like to learn everything. And he was just, we were just up to our necks in the swamps 10 minutes later. And then the cool thing was that he didn't know anything about snakes. And so, how did he not know anything about snakes? Because it's in they, the Amazon. They, they know what medicines are in the trees. They know they know everything. I mean, there's incredible medicines flowing through those trees, by the way. It's another thing that we're losing. But they don't eat snakes. And so they don't really know about snakes. And they just assume that they're all venomous. So I was like, look, I can teach you snakes. You teach me everything else from boat motors to walking barefoot to hunting, tracking, which trees do what. And I got to learn all of that. And all I had to do was show them how to catch a snake. Which And this is when you were 18? Started when I was 18. Yeah. And you just got right. Like, did they accept you right away? Was there an initiation process? Was there like, you got to go out with your dick out in the, in in the Amazon and survive for a night before we survive at all. Your dick would be eaten off immediately. Um, (laughs) The piranhas would absolutely love that. Go swimming naked in the Amazon. If if they're going to eat your foot, they're going to eat your dick. That's just survival science. I mean, that is just, (laughs) guaranteed um <laughs> no their, their test for me was uh there's a thing called a bullet ant and it's supposed to be the most painful insect bite and you play bullet ant roulette you take take a bullet ant and you put it on your arm and then you know my arm and your arm and we rub arms together and whoever it stings it stings and that person spends the next two days in bed with like fever chills headaches sweats spasms. it's a venomous, a venomous sting yeah it holds on with its pincers with its mandibles and then it stings you so it just holds on and just oh yeah it's nasty. So I, I, got to, I, I had to do oh, that. I, I had to do a bunch of other ones. They also fucked with me and they were like, the way you catch a crocodile is by grabbing it by the tail. And I was like, I don't know about that. I was like, and they're like, trust us. This, these ones you grab by the tail. They're just saying that to see it whip around. So I, I mean, you could have been fucking face. killed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I almost lost my face like my first day in the Amazon. It was great. I figure that and I'm coming at it again from as an urbanite. We definitely placate to our children when we're raising them we covet them we we dole over them we protect them but when it comes and and that kind of works in the society it really doesn't but to a certain degree i understand it especially if you're raising a girl but it has an adverse reaction it has an adverse effect you create a soft creature who can't Mm. survive in the harsh realities of these streets and i would imagine the same would be even for children growing up in the amazon the parents can't afford to covet them. They can't afford to protect them from everything. They have to expose them to everything to make them. So they have the reactive Mm -hmm. skills to know that if you grab an alligator by its tail, it's going to whip around. So you got to grab it this way. Yeah, exactly. And like, 
people forget everyone's like oh how do you survive down there there's something like you know 25 million people live in the amazon so there's grandmothers infants you know are you serious 25 million the amazon's bigger than the continental u.s first of all <sighs> but i just imagine it was a bunch of fucking bugs and and, and monkeys and creatures i had no idea and excuse my naiveness in this in this scenario yeah. but i honestly had no idea that that many people habited that area what how, no, are big- they living in fucking huts some of them are, and some of them are living in houses, and some of them don't even live in houses. There's people on the river I work that are still naked in the forest, have never seen a spoon, didn't missed out on the whole wheel, television, radio, all that. They've they've been living out there since the beginning. They're and the is old there a, Is there a tenderness to your interaction? Is there like what are the cultural norms, and have you come up against any sort of um, situation where you approached a native person and offended them or did something that they thought was, you know, that they didn't really understand because of where you're coming from. That's a great question. I don't, I don't think I've ever offended anybody uh, in the Amazon. I've definitely done it in other countries. Like, you know, like in, in India, you're not supposed to, um, you know, you're not supposed to touch food with your left hand, like something like that would, right. you know, no one, if you, you grab a piece of bread with your left hand, everyone's like, we're not touching the loaf of bread after that. Like you're done. Right. In the Amazon, it's such a, wild west outback like you know when i go on hunting trips with these guys like they they shot a a wild boar a peccary and we had the head on the boat and it's like (sighs) we they we smoked it over the fire and then you know you're 10 hours into the day and it's raining and you're freezing cold and then the sun comes out and incinerates you and we're just passing around this boar's head and i would like grab it and like suck out an eyeball and somebody else would like oh my god and we just like hand it around and each person would just take a rip off of it and it's like, those are the kind of guys you're with. And those guys are not, they don't get offended easily. They don't I was care. just going to say, maybe I'll come on an excursion, but oh, I don't want to suck out an eyeball. Oh, I don't want to suck out an eyeball, You've Paul. never sucked out an eyeball? No. You got to live, man. I, I, the, I'm so intrigued, especially okay. let's, I want to talk about the expeditions yeah. that you do. Um, and also Jungle Keepers. Um. I'm so intrigued by a place like the Amazon because it represents so many of my fears. And and I think maybe one of the reasons why I'm so intrigued about nature and, and uh, what you do is because I've lived in this concrete jungle my whole life. Um, and I, I have a genuine curiosity about it. But um, tell tell us a little bit about Jungle Keepers. And then I want to get into the expeditions because I really want to fucking go on one so bad. Um, all right. So Jungle Keepers was... So first of all, this whole, you know, so I went down there 18 and started going around with the local guys. I, inst- it was like a scene, you know, like in Jurassic Park when they see the dinosaurs for the first time and they play the music and you're just like, oh my God. Burr, 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 yeah. burr, it's like burr, a brachiosaurus and she grabs his head and turns him or he grabs her head. Yeah. And you're just freaking out. That was me seeing the jungle for the first time. I was like, I'm home. It's real. I, you know, David Attenborough was right. This shit is amazing. Um, so I knew, I knew hundred percent. I was like, the rest of my life is, is locked. Whatever happens, I'm doing this, whatever this is. And then when you see it start to get destroyed, because at first it was like, let's go on adventures. Let's find big snakes. I want to do cool shit. I'm 18 yeah, years what old. Yeah. What year was this? You, 18 this years 2006. old. 2006. So it's, it's, there's still some sustained destruction, just not to the level of where we're at today, obviously. It, the thing is, it's been going on for 50 years. It's right. going on every year. So like 2019, um, I, I had taken a video of, well, anyway, what I was trying to say is that, is that when you see it getting ripped apart, mm-hmm. then you all of a sudden go, well, you know, I can just keep, I can move deeper and keep doing what I'm doing. But then it comes a point where you go, no, I got to protect this. You know, you look at the monkey in the tree and you look at the birds and you look at the snake and you look at all these animals that you've become familiar with. They're like neighbors. You know, every day mm-hmm. we see the same spider monkeys up there. You, you, the jaguar walked on the trail at night and it's like, at some point you go, this isn't going to be here soon. And so, you know, Jungle Keepers came out of wanting to protect that. A bunch of the local guys were like, you know, bringing people to the jungle is great. Like it it gives us a job. They're like, but you got to You're going to have to do something bigger than this. Um, And so we we formed Jungle Keepers. And that's just been this incredible process. We have people from all over the world. I've I have the amazing luck of having this incredible team. Um, We're right now protecting 55,000 acres. Holy shit. Yeah, it's huge. That's huge. It's and, uh, is there a training process to become a ranger? Yeah, a really tough training process. And our I rangers would imagine. walk all day long. I mean, this this is like the river can flood 
20 feet overnight. This river has in the rainy season, we had 40 foot whirlpools that could suck your boat down. I do the same thing whenever I see Brad Pitt. Got to be honest. (laughs) Had to get it in there. (laughs) Jesus Christ. Um, It's dangerous, though. It's it's really fucking dangerous. It's more dangerous. You have not seen a deluge until you've seen me around Brad Pitt. (laughs) We need you in the Amazon. Um, Thank you. But no, it's 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 very very tough. So to be a ranger, you got to be you got to be really tough. Those guys are out there every single day, and it's rough. And I mean, they're just I mean, they're swinging machetes all day long. You got falling trees, venomous snakes. Um, it's it's tough. But trying to get the support to keep those guys paid and everything else is just it's 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 been it's been crazy because you it's know gotta be, are is like, it purely donation based? It is. It's mostly donations based and. Uh, Actually, so then in 2019, I had filmed this little video and I, I found out about you through Joe Rogan. Yeah. So this is my, this is my Joe Rogan story. I, in 2019, I had filmed a video of burning forests. And later, like a month later, I was sitting at home and all those news stories started coming out about the, the burning Amazon, the burning Amazon. And for like three weeks, everyone was obsessed about the burning Amazon. So I threw up this video, went to bed at night. When I woke up in the morning, there was like nine news stations that had called me. My phone battery was gone. I had like 40,000 more followers on, on Instagram. And then like, I think a day later, Joe Rogan shared that video and it literally blew up everything it gave. So, and, and that was tragic because that year we had so much, you know, the Amazon fires were horrendous that year. They were worse in 2020. And it was just crazy because that year it was, it was great because we had everyone's attention for a second. And, and you had Jungle Keepers was, in, was established. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and how yeah. long has it been established? How many years? Uh, five years, I think. And was that, Terrible did you fast. see, I hope you saw a big bump in donations. Well, that, that was the thing. It was like, that's this, so that, amazing. for that one moment and, and that it got catapulted like that. And everyone, you know, everyone always knocks social media. I was like, let me, let me tell you, like the fact in that situations like that, it helps. And I mean, look at like what's going on with Afghanistan now. It's like, we can see it. You don't have to worry about like the news showing you. You can see it. People are posting it. And that's, I think, very, very powerful about the time we live in. It's like we can show them. I mean, there's local people over the Amazon are just showing you like, look, it's burning. It's burning. You can see it burning. And so like um, that's that's huge. But that year got us a lot of support. That got a lot of donations. And that allows us to pay these guys, these local guys who would be some of them used to be working as loggers. And we're wow. literally just like, we'll pay you better to just walk around and protect the forest. And they're like, oh, okay. How many employees do you have for Jungle Keepers? Probably about only like, probably under 30 people. Oh my God. And in, in your 55, perfect 000. world, how, how many would you like to have? Oh God, I don't know. I that mean, probably a limit. Many, how many rangers, how many rangers to patrol how much land? And then of course you have to have like scientists and law enforcement and you need like lawyers and back end people and graphic design and all this other stuff. But it's it's a huge animal, but it's it's, it's seeing possible. how much people. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. We're doing stuff that when I was growing up, it was always like, you know, you watch a documentary and they're like, you know, the rainforest is beautiful. And then that will be like, but it's all going to die soon. It will just be a barren <laughs> wasteland and you should all go kill yourselves before bed tonight, children. And it's like and fuck that. on to like the new season of Stranger Things. Exactly. Then you flip the channel and you're like, oh, cool. Seinfeld's on like, you well, know, whatever. It- it's it, we got a little taste of it with like quarantine and COVID, how, um, f- you know, fallible the existence is and how yes. sensitive and yeah. compromised we can become yeah. And it. It kind of sucks that it has to come to your front door sometimes for people to really start to care. But that's why I like doing podcasts like this and just bringing awareness to places that they can put some of their energy and time and focus are so important. Um, how uh with jungle keepers i would imagine like these guys that are working for you do you have women first of all do you have any females we we did have a a woman ranger for a while she had to leave um for personal reasons but we want to actually have like a whole women unit because i there's some guys in africa that have been training female rangers and uh there's this guy damian mander who i who i look up to a lot and one of the great stories was that he uh he went to this village and all the men were, you know, they're, they were drunk. They weren't showing up for work. They weren't doing the work and he's trying to protect the rhino. So eventually he goes to the women and just goes, who wants a job? And all these women were like, I'll take a job. So he like trained them. And this one woman who had had a, this one woman who'd had an abusive husband, uh, she got herself like combat trained 
And when training was over, she went home, kicked her husband's ass, took the kid, brought it to her mother's, and then showed up for work to protect rhinos the next day. And I was just like, yes. Women, let me tell you, I love men. I I have love for everybody, except for assholes. But women, and I've been talking about this because I feel like I am one, the amount of resilience they have, I think just because the very nature of a woman is to create life. I think the very nature of a woman is to be resilient. Yeah. But for her to believe that and be it are two different things. Sure. So I think having a full female ranger group, imagine how clean the fucking Amazon would be. We'd clean oh and God. organize it. First of all, first of all, in the wilderness, women, there's no reason that women aren't, you know what I mean? Like the, what, what do men have above women? It's not, it's not a UFC well, fight. Br- they, brute strength, they, first of all. Brute strength, sure. But You're up there climbing trees. I saw your traps and your lats. Tree, a lot of tree climbing, a lot, a lot of anaconda lifts. Um, <laughs> you, put, you put a crocodile on, you lift it up a bunch of times. Um, there's but that no, we, factor. Yeah, there's that factor. But I'm, I'm saying girls, though, have a toughness that I think that guys don't have. And they also have, I think, more they're more level headed. Interesting. I mean, look at look at some of the women out there. I mean, look at like someone like Jane Goodall. She went to Africa when she she did what I did at it at in a total different time. Yeah. As a little blonde girl, she went to Africa and started studying these savage animals that could have ripped her face off. That's right. In like the 50s and, and 60s. Redefined the way we thought of humans. And, and brought this been- like really uh, compassionate and empathetic approach yeah. to being a conservationist. Oh, she's like Mother Earth. She really is like Mother Earth. She really is. She really is. And she's a badass. Right. Um, yeah. One time, like the way she, one time she asked me, she just goes, she was like, so what's the plan in the Amazon? And I was like, I felt like I was talking to a general. Like I thought, I thought, you know, like I just assumed, you know, this is going to be like hanging out with my grandmother and like, no, Jane Goodall views this as like the fight for planet Earth. This is like the battle of the Amazon. Have you guys worked together? Has she offered help or guidance or some mentorship for you through your career. I don't know yeah. if you want to call it a career. It's really like your calling. <laughs> yeah, whatever it is that I do. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, <laughs> she's, like she's, an understatement of what you're doing. She's been, she's been a really supportive mentor to me. Um, and that's she, so amazing. Yeah. No, that's, that's that, what that, a mentor that, to have. What a unique yeah. person to have a, in your pocket. That's got to yeah, feel yeah. surreal, but also Ooh, special. I think she put me in her pocket. <laughs> yeah, she was just, she has I mean, one of them on her pants. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she literally, she literally was like, she was like, yeah, like, you know, she gave me an endorsement for my first book, Mother of God. Um, but it was very clear, like, you know, like I helped you out. And I've also given you something that's very, very valuable. Mm-hmm. My, my acknowledgement. Now protect it. Yeah. What are you going to fucking know? do with it? Yeah. It was and there's like. There's nothing wrong with that sentiment. Not at all. She, and, 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 and it worked. You know what I mean? Like now I'm like, I can't let Jane down. Like, it's like, you, you know, fucking it's like, let crazy. Jane good all down. Jane how good dare all down? you? Crazy. I'm like Greta Thunberg. How dare you? Okay. <laughs> side note is Greta Thunberg. Is she involved in this? Sh- is this bitch in the Amazon? I have no idea what she's doing. I, 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 I see her everywhere. Um, I have no idea. Uh, I know. Is that she, she just in like an H and M outfit and it's a puppet or is she a real, I know she, that she, she one of the good ones. I know she cares too much to eat. Um, and I, her schedule is crazy. So she must be pretty, pretty committed and l- unless her parents are like making her do it. I don't know. I, know, um, I just want, I, really I wonder, know. I want to believe, but I Get mean, the only the thing podcast, I was angry man. about at 15, I know I probably Get her. should, Get her. but she I feel like it does everything she can. I mean, she, she would, she'd probably love to come on and, you know, be That's angry. a really good idea. Cause I just want to, you know, obviously with everything that goes on in social media and the news, it's really hard to dig through and know what's going on. Like with you showing a video of of the burning Amazon, that's a little bit more tangible. You climbing trees and educating about these different creatures. It's more tangible with the scenario with Greta Thunberg and things uh, akin to that. It can feel like a posed situation to get people riled up and go in one direction you know, uh, like I want to know if she's in the like, Amazon getting bloody and and bent. Uh, I think she's more, a, she's more of a protester. I don't know. I, I know yes. that the, I know that it started with that she like wouldn't eat, um, and then I, I just I don't know how she got to to where she is right now. But I think she's the poster child for those kids that feel so guilty just being alive that she was like, I'm not eating anymore. That's a good you know? point, and it, there's so. probably some benefit to it. Um, one of the things I wonder, and I want to ask you, is are there any other um, groups like jungle keepers 
in for the Amazon? Are there any other advocates? Is there anybody there's else so that are? There's so many. And that's the other thing. Like there's, I know people all over the world who are doing such amazing work. And I mean, from, from Jane Goodall level down to like some people that just have a beautiful piece of backyard and, you know, they're trying to protect their local community wildlife by planting, you know, hummingbird friendly flowers. Like there are people doing so many projects now that I actually, on one side, I see the burning Amazon and I go, the world is ending. And on the other side, I go, but so many people are doing projects right now that are like, it might get better. You know, like in a in hundred years ago, like humpback whales were on the brink of extinction. Now they're back to almost pre-whaling numbers. Bald really? eagles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bald, bald, uh, humpback whales are fine. That's they amazing. went down, I think, to like 20,000. And like, I think the, like globally, and right now the, I think their population is over 100,000 right now. They might even be 120,000. Wow. No, they're back. Like that's, that's good news. there's a lot of good news out there. In certain areas, tigers are coming back. Bald eagles. In the 70s, bald eagles were almost extinct. They're on the endangered species list. Yeah. Upstate New York, man, there's bald eagles everywhere. There are. They're and back. You're in, you're in upstate New York. We were talking about that. Yeah. What, yeah. What, were you Watkins Glen? You should send a pic- picture from. No, that was uh, the picture I sent you was from, uh, what's it called? New Pulse. That's the, right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. There's some beautiful spots there, man. Uh, upstate New York, Copperhead. people sleep on it. They're like, Syracuse. I'm like, listen, if you're into nature, there's some really yeah. cool places oh, in Syracuse, New York. St. Lawrence Seaway is all kinds of beautiful stuff. Yeah. You got, you know, houses, they turned into bars. There's all sorts of nature you could find in Syracuse. Oh, yeah. Um, there's couches on front porches. It's, it's, it's <laughs> riddled <laughs> with natural things. Um, a question I want to know is, um, you know, what, what is something you, you, you spoke on it a little bit just a couple minutes ago. What is something someone like me or people who don't have the means or capability to be as involved as you are in, mm-hmm. you know, um, conservation? What are, what are some things we can do in our urban lives to help make this planet breathe healthier and, and help reinvigorate life a little bit more? Yeah, that's such an important question because I think it's 50% of people on earth live in cities. So it's like, if we're going to fix this, everyone's got to be on board with this because wherever you live, whether it's California, wildfires, where, you know, in the Amazon, it's burning. There's, there's tigers are going extinct in India. Indonesia is being cleared for palm oil. And like palm oil's in shampoo, it's in conditioner, it's in like, I don't want to get it wrong, but there's so many little products like, you know, like potato chips and stuff that have it's palm oil. It's a trend. Oil. It's in everything and they level rainforest that's orangutan habitat and it's devastating and it's completely unnecessary. Unnecessary. I stopped using that. This, the, the, you really? Yeah. Cause I, I, I've heard about that and I was like, this is wow. terrible. I don't want to, I use olive oil as much as I can. I don't know what, I haven't looked into what the fuck that's destroying. I'm, you know, like you said <laughs> sure. before, I'm taking one thing at a time. There's your key. And I'm, that's and that's being, where I was going with that. I was going to say, pick <laughs> one. I tell this to everybody because instead of trying to do everything, pick one thing that you think you can affect. And that might, again, that might be, I know someone that plants butterfly, butterfly friendly flowers in their backyard to help the monarchs migrate, to help hummingbirds migrate. And so that's just your own backyard. I'm going to do that. I'm, I'm, I, I just yeah. bought this hummingbird feeder and a little hook to hang it up. My mother, you know, she was a little bit of a conscientious gardener. She yes. had a beautiful garden and took consideration into what creatures were around, like birds and that's butterflies important. and all of that. Yeah. And and feeding hummingbirds. But that's a really good idea. You know, I, I don't know why I didn't even think about that. That's why it's important to have conversations like this. Like something as simple as just planting flowers that attract the creatures. Plant native flowers that the that the wildlife likes and invite it into your house. Don't let your cat go outside and kill it all. Um, <laughs> the, the palm oil thing, it's like these companies, they're... They're destroying, same thing like the Amazon, the thousand year old trees, orangutans, tigers, uh, Sumatran rhinos, all this stuff is going. If these companies, if we just said, look, it's, you're just, it's just not possible. You can't use palm oil anymore. Or we said, we're not buying it anymore. Yeah. They're I mean, why, why the fuck don't, if, that's the one thing that's the change hardest part overnight. about this change is it, knowing what is seeing the destruction of the result of uh, what we're using product wise is like the only thing that I feel like will make people change. And it's, it's such a hard, it's such a hard needle to move because of what I mentioned before. It's gotta be at your fucking doorstep. Yeah. And I mean, nobody, nobody does anything until, you know, they're like, Oh, I became a cancer advocate after I got cancer. And it's like, it really has to kick you in the face before, before, for anybody, before you, before you realize, I mean, I had to, 
I didn't really believe all the stuff I saw. You know, I had to go to the Amazon before I believed it. And, you know, how many people have you heard about where, you know, their, their, their kid has alopecia or something, and then they become an advocate for alopecia. It's like you, it, when it hits close to home, all of a sudden you go, holy shit. You know, that's exact. I mean, I became I an Alzheimer something. advocate after my dad had Alzheimer's. I didn't yeah. even, wasn't something I was like thinking about before. Probably never thought about it before. Yeah. And but, then, you know, I love that saying it yeah. takes, you know, creation comes from destruction. And yeah. so it, it may be, reaching a rock bottom individually can create something more on a societal whole. Like you'd saying more people, everyone has to care, Mm -hmm. but you know, listening to conversations like this, even just starting with the flowers might make you go, what else? Flowers. Um, No. And I mean, I think there's also something poetic about this moment because we've never had a global problem like this. You know, there's like Mm -hmm. world war one, world war two, the plague, like what, what are the biggest events you can think of? this is the first time that we have something that's affecting everybody. Right. And it's the same problem. It's can, are you, are we smart enough to actually be intelligent? Can we actually say, okay, we need this stuff. And if we could just keep this, these systems going, keep the salmon, keep the trees, keep the oceans with green, with fish, we all can go do whatever we want to do. This place is awesome. It and really so, is. I really, it really is cool. Like there's waves to serve. You can go skydiving. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> This um, world, this place is really so amazing. so incredible. And we get to experience it. And it's like, just do it without killing it. You know? And so in, right now, it's like we have the internet. We have global awareness. People are more than ever trying to help. So maybe this is like, you know, Bald Eagles, 1970s America. We had the Ohio River on fire. Bald Eagles are going extinct. And then like we cleaned it up. And now the rivers are less polluted. There's humpbacks coming back to New York City. We have more Bald Eagles. So it's like, we've seen this before. We can clean it up. And it can happen on a planetary level. If we halted, let's just say that Biden got on a plane and went to Brazil and said, look, we're going to hook you guys up with the best trade incentives you've ever heard. And you're going to bring Amazon deforestation to zero. You're all going to make money doing it too. They would, that would overnight, that, that situation would be fixed. You can I mean, save it sounds like you, done. you've got, it might be a, a hard, hard switch for you, but I feel like you could get involved in politics a little bit. And, and no. uh, <laughs> We need a liaison. We need a political liaison for you. We really do. That's Leo's job, man. He's doing it. He's working towards it. I promise you. He's always like in a suit at the UN. I guarantee you in like three, four years, he's going to be running for president. But I think I I would vote. Honestly, if Trump, if Trump can make it, why not have Leo in there and and try and save our planet a little bit? Um, Before we go, first tell people where they can donate and bring some awareness to Jungle Keepers. Yeah. I mean, um, our Instagram jungle keepers, uh, junglekeepers.org. It's people can donate. People can cut, do mon- monthly donations. You can come visit us in the field and like the donations when, when you, when you donate to a giant organization, a lot of times it's going towards their marketing, their staff, whatever else we're very transparent with everything that we do. People's donations go directly to our Rangers, directly to our boats. Um, simple things like boots, forks, there's machetes. a guy who needs a leg. There's a guy, yeah. guy needs a leg. Yo, there is my son. Leg? Yes. Yeah, we need a leg. We need a leg. Can you can we, can we help with the leg? Can I mention yes. the leg? Did he not okay, so, get a leg yet? So, well, we're halfway there. We we uh, like we cut off knee? his leg in November. Um, so that's why, why I, I took a leg and I give a leg. You understand? Now he had a Was tree a fell on his back. <laughs> no, thank God. Oh my God. Um, so no, a tree fell on his back when he was 16 because he was a logger, and he has since become a conservationist, but now he's like 50 years old and that leg has continued to give him him problems in November. It went gangrene. He was going to die. So we did an emergency fundraiser. We flew him to Lima, got his leg amputated. And so right now he's sitting there and uh, I'm actually, I'll probably post it today. Um, We, I was, we were, I was joking with him in his backyard, but we tied a machete to his, like his like knee stump. And he was like, yo, I need, I need a leg. I need a leg. And he's like, this isn't working, but like, we're, we're close. I think we're like $5,000 away. I think we already have $11,000 in the GoFundMe. And it's like, we just need to get this guy a leg. And then he can go back to driving boats and protecting the forest that he was once cutting down. And so it's like stuff like that. Like these guys are happy to work with us. They're so stoked because they love where they live. Right. You know, a lot of them, they don't want to do a dangerous, dirty, illegal job. Um, so that's what we're trying to do is just give these people dignity, educate people about the forest and protect all those little heartbeats so we can keep eating piranhas. Oh my God. I just, when you were talking about his leg in the machete, it made me think of Rose McGowan in planet terror. 
I think she she lost like she got bit by a zombie and they had to cut her leg off and then they attached like an Uzi to her leg yeah. and then she was like shooting all the zombies with the <laughs> Uzi. Well, this guy's swinging his leg with a machete on. He was cutting his grass the other day. It's hysterical. Oh my god! Well, I personally would like to make a thousand dollar donation, so I will be going to your. What? Yes, I I want to I want to help, and I can't. I, I'm in my kitchen, you know. I can't really do uh-huh. much. I'm in my house. I'm in this uh-huh. area where I can't get to to the Amazon. So I will be making a donation on there for his Thank leg, you. and hopefully, other people Thank listening, you. you guys can go. It's right on his Instagram page, and the guy is adorable. The, yeah, so the man I'm, I'm going to just... post the machete video today. Um, he's he's the greatest <laughs> guy, and I swear to God, if you come to the Amazon. Um, we'll get him and I will drive you up the river with him and his new prosthetic leg. I'll make you a piranha sandwich. And at night you can do ayahuasca. Okay. Listen, when you're ready, honestly, Paul, a, come on. Don't you fuck with me. I'm not fucking at all. Yo, come down. <laughs> I'm ready. Do, you just have to tell me how I need to prepare. Yeah. Yeah. I have a whole I gear list. Get, like, I have a, a whole nice workout routine. Petty. You get <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll ask him to put the machete back on his leg. I'll cut your nails for you. Oh my God. Is this gonna you can how, climb a tree how can he help with those? Me? You're gonna need help. Amazon. You're gonna need help. I'm gonna give you an extra gear list. Like I don't know what your workout is, but you're gonna have to do a workout. You're gonna have to get all kinds of gear. I oh, you got guns. guns. Okay. I got okay. some guns. I got some right. tra- Wait, I got these things. I don't know yeah. what these things are. I got some of those. So those are the traps. Yeah. I can got, lift my body weight. Yeah. You can lift your body weight. How many pull-ups can you do? Of like at least three and a half. That's good. That's, That's not, not bad. bad. That's not bad, right? No, so we'll just, I, I'm serious. Yeah. Like I really, this is something when I saw that you do excursions, yeah. can we talk about that real quick? Yeah, please, please, please. It's it shut down Amanda right now because of COVID. But Amanda Tao, how do you say it? Tamandua. 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 <laughs> um, yeah. So, so aside, you know, Jungle Keepers is the conservation organization, but with all the local guys, with my friends, we just started hosting people. And like, these guys are boat drivers, our cooks, our guides, our everything. We just, we host people from all over the world. We do study abroad projects. We've had Nat Geo photographers. We've had Discovery Channel. We had uh, a group of Finnish special forces that came to the jungle and they were just like, kick our ass. You know, we just- Wow, has anyone ever died? Uh, We've only lost two people over the years. Um, No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I I don't- I was like, oh God. No, 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 no. (laughs) Not one casualty? Not one casualty. And I've had everything from 11-year-old kids come. Um. And then I had, I had, I've had, we've had 75 year old people come. I mean, like we've had, we've had a big range of people and uh, no one's, no one's died yet, man. We've had one woman who broke an arm and, uh, and that's it. And she broke an arm because she tripped over really like the ground. Like it wasn't, it wasn't like she got attacked by anything. Yeah. It sucked. It was on her first night. And, uh, Uh. yeah, that was, that was, I would, I would have told everybody it's because I fucking punched a, a, Cougar, Jaguars, Jaguars. Yeah, no, 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 no. I mean, we 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 set her up with a good like other story. You know, <laughs> she needs an Amazon. Paul was halfway down this anaconda, and I was trying to get him out. And my arm just snapped because it was like it was like one of these things where it was like her arm was at like this angle. Yeah, so we were. And then I, does she have to get sent, or did did you like set it, put it in a? Did you guys have to like? fix her there do you have cpr training and all that no you have to have medical training to work like out there where we work because we're way off the grid but we had to evac her in the middle of the night down the river with like a guy on the front with a flashlight get her to town where the people at the hospital were like hey we really don't actually know how to set an arm so it was a whole yeah that was a whole ordeal but the funny thing is don't break your arm in the amazon don't break your arm in the amazon a lot of people like can i bring a sat phone i'm like and call who yeah and uh, by the way who do you want to call like what who would you call that would show up to the middle of the Amazon? No. One. Yeah, just go to the Amazon and shut the fuck off and do a little ayahuasca and eat yeah, the piranha also, sandwich. Like, skin in the game. Yeah, eat, an, eat, eat a piranha sandwich, suck the eyeballs out of it, drink your ayahuasca, and shut up. I'm still going to show up with a full mani pedi, though. All right, you can show up with it. It's going to like be ripped <laughs> off like the first day. That's fine. Day. I just want to show up, Chris. I'm going to get my roots touched up ready to okay. go and then i'll get destroyed there i really think i could handle it can but you, can you I, i've never i've never gotten my nails done can you get them can you get them done so that they're, they're short yeah because i feel like when they're long they're gonna break but if you get them done short then i feel like you'll be fine they'll still be done what if i sharpen them done. and then they're like little well, then, i have 10 machetes well then you can climb the trees and you can get <laughs> you can go in front i'll climb the trees i really will i will and I'll go get the green claws and you can have the the long ones <laughs> yeah that's a deal man that works uh, but it's shut down now for COVID, you said. So you're going to have to let me know when it... 
I mean, we're trying. I mean, a month ago, I was like, all right, let's get some expeditions together. Let's do this. And then, you know, every week they are telling us that there's something new. So if everybody would just get vaccinated and then we could go back to playing in the jungle. I know it would be wonderful if we could just figure it all out. Well, for the meantime, you guys check out Gumble Jungle Keepers. Jungle Keepers. We're protecting the Amazon with local yes. people. Tamandu In- expeditions. We're we're using local guides and local experts to bring people to the jungle. And I, everyone I know that's been to like every every area of the Amazon, they come with us. And they're like, I just haven't seen it like this before. It's I just, I, you know, I just would imagine it's here. absolutely breathtaking. Ironically breathtaking because it is the part of the world that gives us yeah. our breath. Yeah. Um. Th- I have so many more questions for you, but. We've run out of time. Can we make this a two-parter? Yeah, at sure. At some sure. point, yeah, whenever absolutely. you're available, we can. Well, when you're in the jungle, maybe we could do like a live from there. Oh, shit. We could bring out a sat link and sit in the jungle. I'm or really going to hold you to that. I'm, I'm, making a, I'm, I'm making a donation and you're going to have to hold up to this now. And I'm not that person who's like an Indian giver, but I'm going to be one right now. <laughs> Deal. You show up. We'll, we'll go on an adventure, but you have to suck the eyeball out of a fish. Oh, I didn't. Oh, no. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Do I get like a, like a shot or something to chase it? Do you guys have a pickleback? An ayahuasca shot to chase (laughs) it. Chased with an ayahuasca shot. Oh my God. I'm going to die. We'll get you, we'll get you a shot of uh, monkey stream water and you can chase down your, your fish eyeball with that. Fungal. I I regret the day that I said I was going to go on an Amazon (laughs) expedition. We'll have fun. (laughs) Is there any, Closing statement you'd like to say to these people about the Amazon, about what you've learned, about maybe what they should know, um, any sort of sentiment that you want to leave these people with on our part one of our conversation together. Um, Stop putting people that don't care about the environment in office. Remember that it's all of us and our kids and the poorest people who are going to suffer first. And if we don't screw it up, we can do all this cool shit because this planet is incredible. And the other thing is we're not the only things here. The animals depend on us. And like you said, like, you know, you have a connection to animals. So many of us feel like we have a connection to animals and whether it's tigers or elephants or spider monkeys or jaguars, these animals are getting bulldozed, man. Like we we can save them. It's not too late. Get over your environmental depression. It's time to do stuff. And everybody can, whether it's planting flowers in the backyard or starting an organization, you know, everybody can do this. This is definitely possible. So well, this was such an enlightening, wonderful conversation. I appreciate you taking time because I know you're busy and you're in your sort of downtime right now. So thank you so much for scheduling me in. I will put a link for um, a direct deposit so, or direct link for you guys to make a donation. I will be making a donation. So I encourage, oh, there's my creatures. I encourage you guys to as well. And I'll put links to find Paul because you also have a book. I do. Mother I have of a God. Of One yeah, of them's yeah. all about a tough, uh, tough female who adopts a tiger. That's based on a true story. I'm going to send you a copy of that. Please. Um, yeah, I'm going to send you a copy of the girl and the tiger. And uh, yeah, so Pico's leg, we could definitely get him there. And Jungle Pico's Keepers. Leg. Uh, Pico's leg is a separate thing, but Jungle Keepers, we always need the support. It keeps our rangers out in the field and you're protecting the Amazon. So. Well, thank, thank you, you so, so much, much, Paul. This was awesome. I can't really wait to like it. actually meet you and climb trees. I can't wait to watch you eat a piranha. <laughs> It's going to be so much fun. Well, that, that'll be great content. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Putting Just that on my IG. <laughs> Anytime. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Have a good Bye. one. Out. Out.